Well, it finally happened. I'm officially down the mechanical keyboard rabbit hole. If you're like me, you probably started your keyboard hunt by looking at online reviews. I did, and after going through dozens of reviews, I kept seeing one model pop up again and again, the Anpro 2. I was convinced. I had to get one. I decided to get this keyboard from Banggood. They constantly had the best prices compared to other stores out there. You can get the Anpro 2 in two colors, white or black. I got the black version for myself, and I actually got the white version for my wife. We both went with Getron Red switches, but you can also get this in many different switch configurations. It took around two weeks for the keyboard to reach me here in Portugal. The packaging is really nice for the price. You get some colorful spare keycaps, a keycap puller, a red USB-C cable, a quick start guide, and of course, the actual keyboard itself. You can hook this keyboard up to your computer through a wired connection or through Bluetooth. I prefer having it on wired mode just because of the reduced latency. I'm not saying the Bluetooth mode has high latency, but I just felt things were a little bit snappier to me on a wired connection. The Bluetooth option lets you connect to up to 4 devices. I didn't have any connection dropouts at all. The battery also lasted about 3-4 to four days on Bluetooth with RGB on. The Anpro 2 feels really well built. It has a nicely angled plastic body that feels heavy and is solid to the touch. The included keycaps are OEM profile, and they're made of double shot PBT material. They feel quite thick, and they allow the RGB light to shine through. The keycaps also feature printing on the sides to help you keep track of the different layers and functionality. This keyboard has not facing RGB, which shines incredibly bright in most lighting conditions. You can control the RGB effects, colors, and brightness through the Obins Lab software. And there's also shortcut keys on the keyboard itself that lets you cycle through the presets. The software allows you to remap the keys and is compatible with both Mac and Windows, which is great because I frequently switch between both systems for work and light gaming. This is a 60% keyboard layout. If you don't know what that means, it's basically a layout that removes the arrow keys the function row, and the numpad. If you like a minimal vibe, or if you just want more space for extreme mouse movement during games, this is a good option to go with. If you like your arrows, don't worry. You still have access to that functionality through a function called tap. This allows you to use the four keys on the bottom right corner as arrow keys, just by tapping on them. You can also use the magic FN function, which allows you to hold the caps lock key and use your WASD key as arrow keys. I got this keyboard mainly for productivity. I spent many hours typing away on my keyboard for work, so I wanted something that would look good on my desk and also be portable enough for me to carry around, if I had to travel. And I think the Anpro 2 fits that build. Typing on the Anpro 2 is a great experience. It doesn't have a lot of flex because of the tray mount style, but it's comfortable enough for most people's use. It also sounds really good in stock form, partly due to the PBT keycaps, the Gatron red switches, and good stock stabilizers, which, surprisingly, come lightly lubed from the factory. I'm glad I went with Gatron red switches, by the way. They feel really smooth and they sound great to my ears. Choosing the right switch with the Anpro 2 is very important, as the switches on this keyboard are soldered to the PCB. If you don't like the switches that came with the keyboard, you won't be able to switch them up with some other switches. So keep that in mind. Naturally, because I browsed the mechanical keyboard subreddit, I couldn't just leave this keyboard as it is, no matter how much I liked it. I ended up doing a couple of mods to mine, including adding EVA case foam, the burger mount, and the band-aid mod. I also looped the switches and stabilizers, 
which took me much longer than I expected. I'm going to play a clip of my wife's Ann Pro 2 that's still in stock condition. That's the white one. And we'll compare that to my black version that includes all the mods I just mentioned. By the way, this is my first video on this channel. If you're liking this video so far, please consider subscribing, leaving a thumbs up and comment for more keyboard and tech related content. Let the sound test begin. As you could probably hear, it sounds so much better after some relatively easy and cheap mods. They really take this keyboard to a whole other level. The keyboard sounds much tighter and poppier, and the burger mount mod makes the typing experience feel a little bit better too. Now it's not amazing by any means, but this keyboard costs less than $90, mods included. It's all about perspective. So who is this keyboard for? If you're someone who's just getting into the hobby, or if you're looking for a great keyboard that's pre-built and below $100, the Ant Pro 2 is an excellent choice. It offers a great experience out of the box, and it's also a forgiving base for you if you want to get your feet wet with some modding. If you feel like you're going to want to try different switches or go a bit crazier with the modding, this may not be the best choice for you. You should probably look at other pre-built 60% keyboards that come with hot swap functionality built in, like the Royal Clutch RK61, or the Kimu Snow Fox. All things considered, what do I think about the Ant Pro 2? I love the minimal look, solid build quality, great price, and functionality. This really is an excellent 60% pre-built mechanical keyboard, and I can see why it's still so popular, even four years after its release. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.